Good morning. Glad we can meet together again this morning for a few minutes, just around God's word and in fellowship. Welcome to Mount Pottinger Presbyterian Church, as I say, virtual church. Uh, a lot has happened in the last week. We sadly lost our dear friend, Tom Jeffrey, and we continue to remember Doris and the family circle at this sad time. Good to know that Ruth's out of hospital. We continue to remember uh, Evelyn uh, Brannigan, who's in hospital waiting surgery. And also we remember Molly, who is being discharged to a nursing home. And this will bring change to her. Uh, and we just pray for them all, that God would bring them company of his presence uh, and his peace. Also in this Sunday morning, we just rejoice in the Lord's goodness and faithfulness to us. It's been difficult for many to have found themselves isolated to a home, uh, but we rejoice that our God is good and great and faithful. As we come together this morning, let's pray that God would watch over us and guide us as we worship this morning. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we have been reminded again and again this week of the frailty of man and so often the futility of their activities and actions in comparison with the might and majesty of your power. And Lord, we come to you this morning, a humble people, seeking again your presence and your strength, your comfort and your guidance in these days. For so many of us, we have found life very restricted in terms of being at home, unable to get out and about, maybe looking after those who aren't so well. And we pray, loving Father, that you will draw close to each of us as we wait before you. Particularly this morning, we pray, Lord, that you will be in the midst of us while we meet in our homes, either morning or evening, as we share around this video. We pray, Lord, that we will know the comfort of your nearness. Lord, we pray again for those in particular need. And Lord, we, we remember especially this morning, Doris and the family comfort their hearts. Last Sunday morning, we were praying that God would be strength and help to Tom. And Lord, we thank you for him. And we thank you that today he is very much alive in your presence. For all those who are ill, for those who are facing challenging days, may they know your presence. Lord, too, this morning, we pray for our politicians. Give them wisdom as they guide and direct this nation. We pray especially for our health workers in all of the challenging situations that they find themselves in, dealing with those who are ill and those who are dying. We pray too for our teachers who are looking after the children of those key workers. Watch over them, give them wisdom and guidance and bless their family circles. We remember our police service, our ambulance and our fire service who are there to help in all situations. We remember too those members of the military who have been conscripted into serving our communities in these days. Guide and direct and bless them all. Keep us as a congregation close to one another, but also close to you. And so this morning we join as we did before in that prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you for all your comments uh, in terms of the uh, WhatsApp group, encouraging each other and may that continue. Even the the silly jokes are opportunities for us just to laugh together and just to be benefiting from the fellowship that that brings. But this morning, we want to take time to turn again to God's word. And last week, we began our, our thoughts in the book of Ruth, and they were very brief thoughts. And this morning, they may well be just as brief. But I want to read some verses from Ruth chapter 1, uh, reading from verse 6. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. She and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. With her two daughter-in-laws, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back each of you to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. 
May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud. And she said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I am going to have no more sons. Who would become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought that this was a hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to a sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And we thank God for his word this morning. We're going to look at this chapter, not just this section, but the rest of the chapter. And the theme that I have this morning in my mind as I prepared for this was man's extremity is God's opportunity. I apologize as I start for the alliteration uh, for this passage, but I hope it helps us to understand something of what God is teaching through his word. The first thing that I want us to note is a remembered blessing. Naomi had kept in touch whatever way with what was happening back at home. She had family back in Bethlehem and she had been kept up to date at all all that had been happening. And the word came to her that the Lord had come to the aid of his people and the famine had ended. Underlying this message of return is that God's people again had become obedient to his word and God followed that obedience with his blessing. As we noted last Sunday morning, at this particular time, the land was ruled by the judges and they did what was right in their own eyes. But for God to bring blessing, it meant that this people and its judges were now following in the way of the Lord. They were seeking to serve him and to be his people. This morning, the challenge for us is to remember God's blessing of the past and his instruction if we are to become obedient to his word then God will follow with his blessing so often we have prayed for revival in this land and that's what we need and in these dark difficult days there needs to be a reawakening of the spirit of God in the hearts of men But that is only possible when God's people become obedient to God's word and live lives that bring glory and honor to him. And his promise is that he will follow with blessing, abundant blessing, as was seen in past generations within our own country, that God poured out his spirit upon this nation. A remembered blessing, a regretful departure, Naomi, as we see, decided along with her daughter-in-laws to return to the land of promise. And as they began their journey and some way into that journey, Naomi turns to her daughter-in-laws and said, look, I want you to return to your mother's house because what I have in store for you is not easy. If you can imagine the scene of three widows traveling together along a long dusty road with little prospect of the future. Their husbands were dead. Their means of support was gone. Naomi had no other sons for her daughter-in-laws to marry and to carry on the heritage of that line. There were no personal means of support. They would be dependent on others. And so their prospects were poor. And we read that Naomi implored them to return home. Indeed, she embraced them and kissed them and said, thank you for being such good daughters, but return home, find husbands, make a future for yourself. Because the Lord, she said, has turned his face against me. What a way to leave Moab with such heartache, with such regret and with such pain. And and we read that Orpha followed the instruction of her mother-in-law and she departed. There's no shame in her departure. Until this point, she had been a faithful daughter-in-law, so much so that Naomi referred to her as a beloved daughter. 
a regretful departure. As she looked on her life and she looked back on her life, she saw only pain and bitterness and sadness because she had stepped out of the will of God. The Lord had turned his face against her. Now, I'm not sure that that was the case, but that's where Naomi was at this particular moment. And it was at her extremity of life that God would speak into her life once again. A remembered blessing, a regretful departure, a remarkable confession. Two daughter-in-laws, Orpha returned to her mother's house, but Ruth makes that marvelous confession And she replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. That is one powerful confession. You know, there must have been something in the manner of Naomi for Ruth to undertake this journey, bearing in mind that she was going to to live now among strangers, a foreigner in a foreign country. There must have been something in Naomi's life and demeanor that said, yes, if I go to this promised land, there God will meet me. And I believe that as we read this passage, that a trust in God took hold of Ruth's life. I believe that she was now a child of God. In some senses, this is a marvelous picture of salvation. I trust I'm not stretching the illusion. She believed and she confessed with her mouth that Naomi's God was her God. Was that not the instruction that was given in the scriptures to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved? Ruth now understood what possibly she had been taught or spoken to down through the years as she lived in Moab and in the house of Naomi and Elimelech, that there was a God in Israel, a mighty God, who could save and keep and enable and equip his people. What a remarkable confession. I wonder, friends, have we that wonderful confession to share with others that in the midst of dark and difficult days, we have an anchor who keeps the soul. We have a savior who is able and willing to keep us secure. We have a God who holds all things in his mind and in his hands, who created the mountains, who keeps the seas at bay, who is our God? A remembered blessing. God had come to the aid of his people. A regretful departure. Return to your daughters because the Lord has dealt with me ever so severely. A remarkable confession. Where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your God will be my God's. And then a rejoicing company, as we see in the closing verses of the chapter. Naomi returned to her hometown. And we read that there was an uproar in the village because they were glad to see her. Is this Naomi, they said? Naomi called back. Don't call me by that name anymore. Call me Mara, Mara, because I went away full and I came back angry and empty. Indeed, Naomi was angry with God because she had lost her husband, she had lost her children, she had lost any prospect for the future. She was angry with God. And you know, sometimes we do the same. We get angry with God. God understands. Particularly when we face situations that we don't comprehend. When they seem at times to overwhelm us and we face sadness and sorrow and loss and pain and sickness, Sometimes it is natural to get angry with God. But it's in those moments that God reaches down. It was Diedrich Bonhoeffer who said, man's extremity is God's opportunity. When we are at the lowest point, God reaches down to us and lifts us up. Isn't that what the psalmist said? When we were in the midst and the muck of the mire, he lifts us up and he sets our feet upon the firm ground and he leads us out. There was a spark of faith that remained 
in Naomi's life. Even though she was angry with God, she clung to it for dear life itself. And you know, God was going to do remarkable things through her. You know, there are no coincidences in God's plan and purpose. Because we read, and it's almost like a, a throwaway line in the passage. She came home at the time of the barley harvest. She came at the right time. When there was an abundance of food, when there would be an opportunity for both her and Ruth to be sustained as widows in a foreign country. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. We're in one of the most extreme times that we have ever known as a community. And this is an opportunity for us to know God's presence and to lay hold upon God, not only as believers, but as a community in general. When I was thinking of this, my, my studies turned me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, where Paul is writing. He said, we should, like you, our brothers, to know something of what we, we went through. At that time, we were completely overwhelmed. The burden was more than we could bear. In fact, we told ourselves that this was the end. Yet we believe now that we have this experience of, of coming to the end of our tether, that we might learn to trust, not in ourselves, but in God, who can raise the dead, it was God who preserved us from imminent death. It is he who still preserves us. Further, we trust him to keep us safe in the future. And here you can join in and help by praying for us so that the good that can be done to us in answer to many prayers will mean eventually that many will thank God for our perseverance. We are in extreme moments. And it's God's opportunity and desire to be with us. As a congregation, let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our community and our leaders that God would speak in the most powerful ways to turn us again as a nation back to God. My plan this week, and I will follow it through on WhatsApp, is that we should have a day of prayer on Wednesday. And that we will set aside a time from six in the morning to six in the evening. And we would encourage people to take a slot during that time to pray for 30 minutes on your own or with some family member in the house. To pray for our community, to pray for our church and to pray for one another. Thank you for listening. I'm grateful to all those who are helping produce this, this little video. We pray that it, it is a blessing to you all. Take care. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that in the midst of all our difficulty, the promise of your presence is that all was there. Lo, I am with you always. Be with us as a people. Guard and guide us in the week that lies ahead. And we pray again that your grace, your mercy and your peace will be our blessing today and forevermore. Amen.